Stornoway's vision is to become successful as a producer and seller of rough diamonds. At the same time, we would like to balance that against a very aggressive exploration strategy to find and develop new diamond mines in a market that has become increasingly undersupplied. It's been an extremely busy and productive year for Stornoway. We're very pleased with the results of our major bulk sampling effort, which was undertaken on our most advanced project, Renard, a project which we hope will become Quebec's first diamond mine in the not-too-distant future. We're here visiting the Renard site, the site of a large 10,000-ton bulk sampling program that began last winter. So you guys flew in here, you landed on this part of the lake, and then taxied in over to here. The Renard project could represent the first diamond mine in the Quebec province. The Renard is located in the Cree territory, in the James Bay lowline. This project is uh, currently one of the most advanced exploration projects in Canada. This operation would be a small to medium-sized diamond mine. It is not the same size and nature as the diamond mines that have currently been developed in the Northwest Territories. So in order for this project to be viable, we do have to pay close attention to cost. And one of the ways that we can do that is by improving infrastructure and uh, cost of power. And we can do that uh, by building a road. We brought everything up on a winter ice airstrip. Everything is brought in using aircraft. Uh, that includes all supplies as well as all of the equipment. We are working very closely with the Quebec government uh, as well as First Nations in building support for a road that would access this project and actually continue further north to open up this area for other purposes. We have now a firm commitment from the government to uh, start the feasibility study of the road. The project is called Route mont Autiche, and it is the aspiration of the local communities to see a road completed from the community of Mistissini, which is one of the Cree nations in the region, up to the existing Hydro-Quebec stations in the La Grande River area. Our project would be along the route of that road. This would be a mine where you drive to the gates of the, of the mine with your truck. That means that the potential cost profile of this project will be lower, both in the capital cost and the operating cost. Bringing in power is another opportunity to cut our costs, and uh, we're hopeful that we can negotiate an agreement with Hydro-Quebec to drive a power line from station LG4 uh, to access the site as well. If this project turns into a mine, then there will be more uh, development like, uh, for the cruise. In 1975, the Cree Nation and the Quebec government signed an agreement. So now the business situation regarding the mining is stable. The Cree Nation of Mr. Sine is a mining community. The community in Shibukamu is a mining community. There's a lot of expertise and capacity and talent here. We certainly want to capitalize upon that at Renard. I'm uh, Cree from uh, the community of uh, Mr. Sine and I've been uh, involved in this project for about three years now. I've been to uh, several uh, exploration camps and uh, by far this one is the best. The project started in 1996 with reconnaissance exploration. The first kimberlite was discovered in 2001 and since then exploration has advanced to the bulk sample stage. We are going underground and we are collecting a large surface sample here. Go down and uh, we see we will see the, the the jumbo drilling, and we have a scoop uh, mucking. We are now at around 400 meters, and we just enter in the Kimberlit in the Renard tree. Establishing the diamond processing facility is an important step forward in this project. It's uh, it's an exciting time to actually have the opportunity of, of seeing large amounts of, of this potentially uh, economic rock come out of the ground and to, to work with it and begin understanding its true value. Beside me is the uh, crusher which I'll, which I'll be uh, operating and uh, what the crusher does is it breaks the big rocks into uh, smaller pieces so it'll be ready to be processed. This processing facility is designed to take the crushed ore 
put it through several stages of washing, crushing, and finally dense media separation to separate the diamonds from the waste rock. The processing plant will be run on a 24 hour basis using two shifts of 12 hours. Each shift will comprise four people. That operation will be overseen by an independent security force uh, who has a presence within the, the processing facility and, and is supported by closed circuit television. In all reality, what we have to make sure of is that what comes out of this mine and what is counted will be exact. We're doing exploration outside the Renards. We're doing heavy mineral sampling, geophysics, and prospecting, looking for additional kimberlites. This is the old mapper system. We're looking for resistivity low anomalies. We found as a lot of the kimberlites generally are, are low in resistivity. A couple of the uh, interesting dikes that we've discovered in the last couple of years are Lynx and Ibu. Lynx is approximately two kilometers west of camp. I'm quite excited about that discovery. We have now completed the processing of approximately 6,000 tons here on site at Camp Lagoped. The final concentrates have been shipped to our laboratory in North Vancouver. Here in the diamond recovery circuit, we're getting DMS concentrate from the field and those 45 gallon drums contain DMS concentrate, which is about 1% of the initial rock weight. The material is sized and then reduced further through an X-ray flow sort machine where uh, ejections from the machine go directly into a lockbox. The lockbox is then transported into a secure locked area in the same room with uh, security backup and dual custody. The material is then passed over a grease table and diamonds not ejected into the flow sort machine are captured on the grease and then both the grease concentrate and the flow sort concentrate are sent to observation for diamond picking and classification. We collected around 6,000 tons in order to get 6,000 carats of stones. One of the things that makes diamond mines different from other ore deposits is that it's not just the quantity of the diamonds that makes a deposit become a mine, it's actually the quality of the stones, the size of the stones. And the big thing that's been striking about the Renard kimberlites and the diamonds in them is that the diamonds improve in quality with increasing size. Anybody with an eye for beauty can actually be a bit of an evaluator of the stones. In September 2007, we took our 6,500 carat parcel of diamonds that we extracted from our bulk sample program last year. We took it to Antwerp, the centre of the world's diamond business. We presented these diamonds for valuation. Those results confirmed and actually improved upon previous mini bulk sampling work and established that a large part of the resource will have diamond values that will exceed $100 a carat, so we're extremely pleased with that. We recovered a number of large stones throughout the bulk sampling process, which have given us further encouragement that Renard has the potential to be a producer of large, high-value diamonds. Each mine in the diamond business becomes known for a characteristic product that it produces. Renard will become known as a producer of large, high-value gems. The diamond business is a very aspirational business. People aspire to bigger stones, more impressive pieces of jewelry. As they go through life and they become wealthier and more comfortable, they spend more relatively on diamonds. And we, we know there's not much on the horizon out there that's producing this type of product. Renard has the potential to fill that gap and provide a very, very attractive product in the world diamond market. We really have just scratched the surface in exploring for diamonds in Canada. We feel there's a lot of opportunity to find further world-class discoveries. These mines are being developed in relatively remote regions and they're producing high quality gemstones and they're produced in a very environmentally and socially responsible manner. These diamond mines provide great opportunities for employment of local First Nations and these diamond mines also have minimal impact on the environment so they're certainly considered more desirable. Canada has become an important producer of diamonds and we are now ranked third in the world. Canada's industry is still very young. I mean, 10 years from now, hopefully, we'll have a diamond mine up here and we'll be producing diamonds and selling Quebec's first diamonds and looking back on this time as the discovery time when the whole thing came together.